Please welcome our mayor, Buddy Dyer. Good afternoon. I'm Mayor Buddy Dyer, and I'd like to welcome you to the March 31st, 2014 Orlando City Council meeting. We're going to begin today's proceedings with an invocation offered by Reverend Charles E. Williams, Jr., Senior Pastor of Zion, Hills, Miss Zion Hill Missionary Baptist Church. Reverend Williams became the senior pastor in August of last year when Reverend Jesse Ivory retired after serving for over 30 years. Reverend Williams is a graduate of Edgewater High School. I thought that might get a little cheer out there. Only the best. And Commissioner Lynham, he received his accounting degree from Bethune-Cookman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he's currently pursuing his Master's of Divinity degree. Zion Missionary Baptist Church is located in the Washington Shores community at the corner of Columbia and Drew and has been serving our community for 93 years. Among other activities, the church is currently partnering with Eccleston Elementary and Second Harvest to make a difference in our community. Reverend Williams' invocation will be followed by the pledge led today by District 3 Commissioner Robert Stewart. Would everyone please join me in standing? Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. God, we thank you for this gathering. We pray now for every citizen of the city of Orlando and the surrounding areas. We pray, God, that you will bless us abundantly. God, we pray for our city leaders that you will guide them today as they make wise and prudent decisions to help uh, advance our, our community. And so, God, we give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory, for you are worthy of it all. In the mighty and matchless name of the Master, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. It's officially call the meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll and make a determination of a quorum, please? Commissioner Gray? Here. Commissioner Ortiz? Commissioner Stewart? Here. Commissioner Sheehan? Here. Commissioner Lynham? Here. Commissioner Ings? Here. Mayor Dyer? Here. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's take up for consideration the meeting minutes of the agenda okay. review and okay. city council meetings of March 17th. Motion by Commissioner Lynham, second by Commissioner Stewart. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed and the motion carries. Let's move into awards, presentations, and recognitions. I'm going to call on Dave Arnott, um, who is our, well, on my staff and is at the support for the Mayor's Veterans Advisory Council for the first recognition. Dave. Mayor, Commissioners, on March 30th, 1973, all U.S. troops withdrew from Vietnam. There were no ticker tape parades honoring the veterans, no triumphant marches or speeches as there had been at the end of each of the world wars. America's Vietnam veterans were returned home to silence or worse, in some case, denigration for having served their country during a controversial war. In 2007, both the U.S. Congress and the U.S. Senate passed resolutions proclaiming March 30th as National Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day. This year marks the 30, 41st year of the withdrawal of U.S. combat and combat support units from Vietnam. Today, we urge all citizens and communities to honor Vietnam veterans on March 30th and to remember and honor the service of all veterans throughout the year. Take time to say thank you for your service. Welcome home, and to those of you who didn't make it home, thank you for your sacrifice. Joining us today in the City Council Chamber are many veterans and several members of the Mayor's Veterans Advisory Council, to include Chairman Michael Waldrop and Secretary Vinny Menito, who is also the Chairman of the Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 755. Mayor, you have a proclamation? I do. City of Orlando Proclamation. Whereas the Vietnam War, also known as the Second Indochina War, military struggle was fought in Vietnam from 1959 to 1975, and whereas the United States became involved in Vietnam because American policymakers believed that if the country fell under a communist government, communism would spread throughout Southeast Asia, and whereas in 1964 the U.S. Congress overwhelmingly passed the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, 
which effectively handed over war-making powers to President Johnson until such time as peace and security had returned to Vietnam. And whereas in 1965, U.S. combat troops composed mainly of volunteers arrived in Vietnam, and whereas by the end of 1965, there were 80,000 U.S. troops in Vietnam, and by 1969, a peak of about 543,000 troops had been reached. And whereas on January 27, 1973, the last U.S. troops left Vietnam, and whereas more than 58,000 Americans lost their lives in Vietnam, and more than 300,000 U.S. soldiers were wounded, and whereas in 1982 the Vietnam Veterans Memorial was dedicated at the Capitol to commemorate the U.S. personnel who died or were declared missing in action. Now, therefore, I, Buddy Dyer, Mayor of the City of Orlando, hereby do proclaim Sunday, March 30th, 2014, as Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day in the City of Orlando. Mayor, can we take a photo with them? You know, Mayor, in the future, maybe we can have all council sign those kinds of proclamations because it benefits our whole country, and all of us have the same sentiments. So that would be great. Thank you, Commissioner. I think that's a very good idea. So we're making a big day of it. <laughs> Take all the look funny. Go ahead. You look toward the camera, sir. We want to get your picture on. Okay, I think we do this just about every year. It seems like we have state champions in basketball from Central Florida, and we have two sets of state champions, and I'm going to let Rodney Williams decide which one of the two <laughs> schools he's going to call up first. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to have to go with the ladies first. Guys, I'm sure you guys will, will appreciate that. You're right, Mayor, we do. We have the opportunity, Mayor, Council, we have the opportunity of re recognizing two state champion teams uh, that are representing the city of Orlando. We have both the Edgewater Lady Eagles and the Lake Highland Prep Highlanders. First of all, the Edgewater High School Lady Eagles boasting a 28-6 and six record are the District 7 Region 2 champions, and on February 22nd, they defeated Pensacola Pine Forest 53-34 to for the Class 6A state title. This was their fourth title in the school history. And this is a three-peat? This is their three-peat. So they're back. They have, their seniors are Nyla Schuler, 
who was named Orange County Player of the Year by the Orlando Sentinel, as well as 6A State Play, Player of the Year and, the, and for the Dairy Farmers. She will be continuing her basketball career right here at the University of Central Florida. Oh, all right. Which one is she? They also have Haley Clark, who was named the Orlando Sentinel First Team All Area, <laughs> and she will continue to play basketball at the University of Georgia. And senior Markima Crawford will continue her career at Towson State University in Maryland. This team is represented by Coach Malcolm Lewis, who starts his season off every year asking the girls if they want to go see the mayor. So they decide they want to come back and see the mayor. So Coach Lewis, you'll come forward, Mayor. Great incentive. <coughs> Tell you what, let me read the proc and give you some marks. Whereas Edgewater High School has played a significant role in the Orlando community since 1952 as a high caliber learning institution that provides a well-rounded education to its students. And whereas on February 22nd, 2014, Edgewater High School's Lady Eagles basketball team captured the 6A state basketball championship by defeating Pensacola Pine Forest. And whereas this is the school's third consecutive state girls basketball championship title and fourth in school history. And whereas the city of Orlando shares in the prize of their coaches, faculty, fellow students, friends, and family in this tremendous accomplishment. Therefore, I, Buddy Dyer, Mayor of the City of Orlando, hereby do proclaim Monday, March 31st, 2014, as Edgewater High School Girls Basketball Team Day in the City of Orlando. Thank you. We're honored to be here. Uh, Mr. Williams remembered from the past meetings where I said this is part of our motivation <laughs> to come back. So just sitting there, I've got to go back and get all of the dates. Uh, I guess our next goal is to maybe try to fill up a week of <laughs> dates <laughs> and have uh, our own week for Edgewater <laughs> Girls basketball. But uh, we're really honored to be here. We're happy to be here. If I may, I would like to introduce our principal. Okay. I'm going to just stand over here and watch you introduce him and have them all come out for the picture. Okay. Our principal, Ms. Mrs. Erickson. <laughs> We're thankful to her because she approves all of the little trips and things that we like to take uh, to prepare for the, the uh, big tournaments uh, this year, this team. Uh, represented Orlando in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, uh, as runner-up of that championship there. Um, and Naples, uh, we had an important win in Naples over a team from Jacksonville, Reebok. That win uh, gave us the opportunity to travel to New York City this week. We are going to represent Orlando in, and the state of Florida in the National High School uh, invitational. We will be on ESPNU live at 10.30 a.m. Friday uh, morning. If we win or when we win, <laughs> when we win Friday, we have the opportunity to play for the tournament championship in Madison Square Garden. That would be at 10 a.m. Saturday morning. So it all starts with walking in Mrs. Erickson's office and saying, is it okay if we go to Myrtle Beach? <laughs> and uh, the young ladies are prepared for that. Along with that permission is our athletic director, Coach Miaris. <laughs> Serious meeting this morning about going to New York. She's making sure everything is taken care of. Our assistant head coach, Na Dr. Natalie Ford. <laughs> this year, Dr. Ford will present our team ball to Mayor Dyer. <laughs> that way, when the budget gets tight and we need some more basketballs, we'll come back to your office. <laughs> <laughs> Assistant coach and junior varsity coach, uh, Greg Farrell. <laughs> In 
Edgewater's first player to not only win uh, a state title as a player, but after four years of playing at Wake Forest, she came back and is a part of our staff, Brittany Waters. Moving along quickly, that, that rounds out the uh, coaching staff. Our seniors, and you've heard a few of their accomplishments, uh, but these seniors can say that 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, they were state champions. That's Haley Clark. <laughs> Nyla Schuler. Markima Crawford. And Tashina Smalls. <laughs> Juniors, Angela Jernigan and Shamika Gibbs. <laughs> Sophomores, Tierra McMillan. <laughs> Victoria, Victoria Patrick. and Victoria Lovejoy. The freshmen who are going to try to be the first class to get four. <laughs> you see, you put that pressure on them right away. Four <laughs> titles. That's Monique Schumann. And Elizabeth Panfield. And very special to us, the person that takes care of us, Senior Taffy Gessie, Jesse, our manager. Thanks, gentlemen, for waiting so patient. And also, Mayor, we have our Lake Holland Prep Hollanders. <laughs> Boasting a 29-4 and four record, the District 7 Region 2 champions, on February 26, they defeated Jacksonville Reebok 58-53 for the Class 4A state title. The scenes on this team were Jay Henderson and Junior Jaron Lewis. I'm sorry, the players that received accolades were Jay Henderson and Junior Jared Lewis were named to the first team All-State, while Senior Joe Barry II was honored as a three-time Gatorade Player of the Year as well as Mr. Basketball for the state of Florida for the third time in a row. 
and also McDonald All-American. He will be attending the University of North Carolina in the future. Joe is not with us today because he's representing us in Chicago at the McDonald's game. Their team is led by Coach Jason Valerie. Coach, if you join us. Whereas Lake Highland Prep School has played a significant role in the Orlando community since 1970 as a high caliber learning institution that provides a well-rounded education to its students. And whereas on February 26, 2014, Lake Highland Prep Highlanders boys basketball team captured the 4A state basketball championship by defeating Jacksonville Rybolt. They probably don't want to play Orlando teams anymore, do they? Mm -hmm. Whereas this is the school's second consecutive boys basketball state championship tournament win, and whereas the city of Orlando shares in the pride of their coaches, faculty, fellow students, friends, and family in this tremendous accomplishment, now, therefore, I, Buddy Dyer, mayor of the city of Orlando, hereby do proclaim Monday, March 31st, 2014, as Lake Highland Prep School Highlanders Boys Basketball Team Day in the city of Orlando. Mayor Dyer, Mr. Williams, thank you so much for this prestigious honor. Uh, really proud of what our boys accomplished this year. 29-4 and four record, uh, nationally ranked schedule that we played, uh, wins at the City of Palms, as well as the uh, high school overtime tournament in Raleigh, North Carolina. And then again, culminating with a state championship, uh, our second state championship in a row. Uh, just blessed to be a part uh, of that accomplishment. I'd like to call up. Uh, everyone we have with us here today, uh, starting with our coaches, Associate Head Coach Dustin Bolin. <laughs> Assistant Coach Adrian Davila. <laughs> Players representing us today, Senior Malcolm Laws. <laughs> Junior Jaron Lewis. Senior Jay Henderson. <laughs> Senior Michael Albertson. <laughs> Junior Chris Jablonski. <laughs> Junior David Jablonski. <laughs> Junior Justin Childers. Senior Evan Jager. <laughs> Senior Devin Giddens. <laughs> Junior John Gall. <laughs> Sophomore Bobby Miles. <laughs> Junior Jack Filburn. Sophomore Arlen Bockhorn. Once again, Mr. Dyer, thank you so much for this recognition.
Okay, for our final presentation, I'm going to call on Manny Soto, our emergency manager, um, to explain American Red Cross Month. Great. Mayors, commissioners, uh, 131 years ago, the American Red Cross has been dedicated in providing relief to victims of disasters, helping people prevent, prepare for, and respond to emergencies all across the United States. It is no different here in the city of Orlando. They're dedicated and compassionate volunteers selflessly change lives around the clock, responding to many disasters a year, including numerous fires every day. The rich tradition and dedication and service to our community lives with the American Red Cross. They are part of our community. They always answer the call. They are always there to lend a helping hand. I am proud to say that the American Red Cross Mid Florida chapter is one of the our most important key disaster response partner. They are also a strong advocate of disaster preparedness and public outreach. Over the years, we have partnered in many disaster preparedness efforts and will continue to do so. We have a united front when it comes to community preparedness. It is very reassuring to know that the American Red Cross has a great presence in our community and the American Red Cross leadership has always been a keen supporter of the Office of Emergency Management and the Orlando Fire Department. We feel very proud of our partnership and mutual support over the last years and continue to look forward to many more years. Once again, congratulations to the American Red Cross. With you, I leave Karen Hagen, Regional CEO of the Mid-Florida Region Chapter. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Mayor Dyer, Commissioners, Chiefs Miller and Mina and Manny Soto, our Emergency Management Director, thank you very much for this recognition of March's Red Cross Month. For 97 years, we have, um, as Manny said, stood side by side with you to take care of our citizens, and we are honored and proud to do that, and can, hopefully we'll be able to continue to do that for the next 97 years. Um, I. I'm so happy to say that we are partners in this culture of preparedness and kind of turning people from apathy to action when it comes to taking care of themselves, their families, making sure they're prepared for emergencies, taking training in first aid and CPR, and, and we want to continue to respond side by side. It's what's good for this community. So thank you so much for your ongoing support. Whereas the American Red Cross was founded in 1881 by Clara Barton, a woman selflessly devoted to the needs of humanity, and whereas chartered and authorized by Congress to act in times of need, the Red Cross provides relief to victims of disasters and helps people prevent, prepare for, and respond to emergencies, and whereas the American Red Cross of Central Florida was established in 1917, and whereas the American Red Cross staff deploy with the U.S. military to provide emergency communications and a caring presence to servicemen and women separated from their families, and whereas in March of 1943, President Franklin Roosevelt called upon the American people to rededicate themselves to the aims and activities of the Red Cross. Now, th therefore, I, Buddy Dyer, Mayor of the City of Orlando, hereby do proclaim the month of March 2014 as American Red Cross Month in the City of Orlando.
Okay, the number of people left in chambers would suggest the importance of state basketball championships in the <laughs> city of Orlando. <laughs> Um, so let's move into uh, my update, and I have just several things. Uh, we hosted the second and third rounds of the NCAA tournament for the first time in 10 years uh, a couple of weeks ago, and the total attendance for March Madness in Central Florida, including the fans, the teams, administrators, bands, and cheerleaders, topped 50,000 for that weekend, and I've not actually looked, but I'm going to want to believe that since we had one of the bigger arenas that the second and third rounds were being played in, that we probably had as many fans attend our games as anywhere during the second and third rounds. And we sold out um, for Saturday, in fact, sold 150 or so obstructed view seats. So the NCA was very impressed with um, our abilities to host the tournament. And it didn't hurt that we had the number one seated, number one ranked University of Florida Gators here in town, and it looked like a Gator home game pretty much on Saturday, and they have made it to the Final Four. So when we talked about building the Amway Center, we talked about it being more than just a home for the Magic, and that weekend proved us true. Um, our initial estimates are over 14,000 room nights and nearly $10 million of economic impact in addition to the immeasurable national and even international exposure as you saw the broad broadcast and the great view of the city. So we heard from a lot of our downtown businesses that they had record sales over those two days, even more than the NBA All-Star Game. And we received a number of letters from uh, a number of the teams talking about the quality of the destination and the people that were part of that effort. So Alan deliver a message well done to the entire team. Thursday, April 10th, uh, is State of the City, and we're going to do it outside on Church Street. So we'll be watching for the weather. Um, it'll begin at 10 a.m., and I invite you to come down on Church Street between Orange and Garland and stay downtown for lunch. And there will also be Sunrail um, community train tours between 11 and 1. The 25th annual Spring Fiesta in the Park is Saturday and Sunday, April 5th and 6th. There will be more than 200 artists and crafters that will line the street, and everybody is invited to this free, pet-friendly event. I want to remind District 5 residents to get out and vote in the city's upcoming commissioner election. Early voting starts today, Monday, March 31st, at the Supervisor of Elections Office and continues through Saturday, the last day to request an absentee ballot to be mailed out is April 2nd, and election day is April the 8th, when the polls will be open from 7 to 7. A uh, couple of items of note on the agenda. Today we are approving the operating agreement for the new expanded limo service, downtown Orlando's fare-free bus circulator, the existing Orange Line, will be joined by the new Grapefruit and Lime Lines, uh, which will expand mobility for Sunrail, our Paramore residents, our Central Business District, and Fortin Park. Also on today's agenda is the project construction agreement for the new soccer stadium. As you recall, we've previously approved the MOU and interlocal agreements. The construction agreement is modeled after the approach that we reused on the Amway Center, Brett Lashbrook, COO of Orlando City Soccer, is here with us today. Brett, where are you? Mm, I saw him outside somewhere, probably being interviewed out there. Okay, I think the, uh, the most important thing about the agreement is, uh, just like the Magic Agreement, the, the team, the developer, will be on the hook for any cost overruns. There's a finite amount of money, of public money, that is going into the construction of the venue, so anything above that project cost uh, will be borne by the team. I want to recognize staff who have worked very diligently on all of these legal agreements. John Thompson, Amy Ainako, Wes Powell, Roy Payne, Allison Brackens, Kyle Shepard, Jody Litchford, and City Attorney Mayan Downs from the legal department, who also worked closely with Byron, Alan Johnson, Ray, Craig, Frank Usina, Eric, and Gennaro. Um, let's give them all a hand. <laughs> we 
you know, I, I was talking with Mayan about this, and most other cities farm most of that legal work out, and we're able to do the vast majority of that in-house with our extremely talented legal staff, and I deeply appreciate the talent that we have there. Another key element to the venues plan is the financing, and last week the finance team led by CFO Rebecca Sutton and Chris McCullion successfully sold the bonds for phase one of DPAC, the Citrus Bowl, and the new soccer stadium, and I'm pleased to report there was strong interest in the city's bonds, and they were over, oversubscribed. So in other words, there were a lot more buyers than we had bonds to sell. So that is a good thing. Thank you for all those countless hours and meetings and for keeping our financial situation strong. And then on today's agenda is an item that will provide funding for the FSU College of Medicine Science Students Together Reaching Instructional Diversity and Excellence, or S-Stride, which is being offered by Jones and Memorial. And under Commissioner Lynham's leadership, this program um, is part of the city's Orlando Medical Careers Partnership and builds off of the successful um, blueprint program. It is a comprehensive approach that engages city residents from elementary school all the way to adulthood to provide job opportunities and create educational enhancement. Commissioner Lynham, thank you for taking the lead in this very important area. And with that, we will move to the consent agenda. And the consent agenda is a number of items that are acted upon through a single vote of council. We give each of our commissioners an opportunity to update you on items of importance from the district and also comment on any uh, particular consent agenda items that they deem appropriate. And we alternate the order in which we do that. And today, Commissioner Stewart is first up. Commissioner. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it, and thank you for recognizing Edgewater and Lake Highland. Those are two great schools in our city, and, uh, and I have the honor of serving them as part of my district. So thank you for, for doing that, and thank you to all the parks and recreation people who help coordinate that. Uh, this past weekend, I had a chance to go over at uh, Elam Baptist Church and see the work that they're doing over there. Uh, commissioners, you all will remember that we have just annexed portion of Elam Baptist Church into the city, uh, and so we're thrilled at what they are doing. They've been over there 14 years, and now we've expand they've expanded a little bit, and they did a great uh, community outreach this past weekend. Uh, let me say thanks to Michelle and her entire crew about the work on the website. I'm thrilled about what we've seen so far, and, and uh, I don't see her here, but uh, um, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate the work. I, I know what goes into that, and I know what still needs to continue to go into that to make sure it's going to be the quality, but we've got a, just a wonderful start, and Mayor, congratulations on what you have accomplished so far. Um, let me mention one thing to you, and uh, Commissioner, I share this with you because I think it's an important part to our city. Uh, a few uh, weeks ago, we started Operation Lock It Up, and uh, it's about ready to go citywide, and I'd love to see it in every, I think uh, Chief Mina would agree, in every district in a strong way. But let me just share with you some statistics that we found. And we're seeing some real results in District 3 in terms of having a safer community. Um, today, we canvassed uh, a couple of areas in Baldwin Park, canvassed for one hour. And in that one hour, uh, we um, um, had nine, let me go back real quickly. We had nine um, uh, unlocked vehicles uh, in Baldwin Park, and we had three unsecured homes in Baldwin Park. Um, and it's the message that we want to send throughout the entire community is that if you want to make a safer community, it starts at your home. And, uh, and we don't live uh, uh, in the old days. We need just to secure our own property. Um, we have now accomplished this over the course of the past several weeks. We have canvassed for 10 hours. Uh, ten and a half hours, and in those ten and a half hours through the work of OPD, we have found 89 unlocked vehicles and nine unsecured homes. Um, and uh, I'm telling you that uh, uh, if, if we can't, uh, we need to solve that problem by making sure we get the word out to secure your house and secure your car. So, uh, Chief Mina, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for what you have helped uh, help us accomplish. Uh, and, uh, and let's get this thing to spread throughout the entire city because I think we can create the awareness that if you come into Orlando, uh, we're going to make sure it's going to be inconvenient for a, a bad guy to, uh, to take advantage of us. 
Um, uh, some updates real quickly and on some items on the agenda. Uh, the fourth annual Kid Fest in Audubon Park is April 26, beginning at noon. It's a great event where all of our local businesses in the district give kids lessons on their craft, um, baking cupcakes, making music, creating art, and much more. So check out apgardens.com um, because there are a limited number of spots because of all the things that we're doing. Um, lots going on over at Lou Gardens. Uh, this Friday is a movie date night showing Gravity. Um, um, I guess Oscar winning. Where's Mr. Bowden? Uh, an Oscar winning movie. Um, uh, Monday is story time and free admission. And now we're getting ready for the summer to get the opportunity to share our, with our parents to come over and enjoy the park. And then April 12th is the annual jazz and blues, blues stroll. Uh, Orlando Museum of Art is celebrating their 90th year, and each month they host a themed First Thursday event where you can stroll through the museum and enjoy an evening of art and conversation and drinks and food. This month's event will be April 3rd from 6 to 9. Let me mention a couple of things briefly on the agenda. Mayor, thank you for mentioning the Orlando uh, Soccer Stadium. Uh, Alan, thank you for the work that you and your staff have done. I appreciate that. Um, it's, uh, I think it's uh, a good signal to our community that we have set aside the, um, uh, the boundaries, uh, the rules and guidelines, and we've stuck to them uh, for the benefit of the city. So thank you very much for you and your staff. And, Mayor, thank you for your leadership in that as well. Uh, two other things I want to mention briefly. Uh, item D2, the partnership between GOA and the city and uh, the Kittinger Group. I mentioned this on behalf of uh, Commissioner Ortiz, um, and because the Kittinger Group are just all longtime friends of mine. But they're getting ready to bring an F-4 vet, uh, jet that's going to be set over on the uh, shores of, uh, of Herndon. And uh, it's going to be really, I turned it, I apologize, Orlando Executive Airport. I'm showing my age again. And so as people come into the city from the east, they'll get a chance to see this F-4 um, jet, uh, similar to what uh, uh, Kittinger flew in Vietnam. So um, uh, that's a really neat, uh, uh, neat thing they're doing. We're partnering with them to allow them to do that. Go is partnering to store it, and they're going to raise the money for the installation and the maintenance as well. So that's a really neat partnership that we're doing. And then item I-2, the LAP agreement for the sidewalks, um, just announcing, I guess, to our community, especially in District 3, uh, that we have received $2.4 million more in terms of money for sidewalks in our community. They have been well received uh, in the first LAP agreement. Now we're in LAP 2. Uh, and so uh, we're excited about seeing that happen and seeing more, a more walkable city uh, as we have committed to doing. And that's all that I have, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll move to District 4, Commissioner Sheehan. Uh, thank you, Mayor Dyer. On the agenda today on item C4 and 12, I'm glad to see that we're hiring more permitting techs because it's really busy in permitting right now, and that's, that's good news for everybody. I, too, am delighted to see more citywide sidewalks being built and filling in those gaps, especially in our established neighborhoods. So I'm very happy to see that. And um, something really exciting that happened um, for me last week was um, we had a really nice find. This is actually the key that was presented to Linton E. Allen. A lot of folks don't know who Linton E. Allen was. He was actually the fellow who was inspired to build the Lake Yellow Fountain and spearheaded the initiative to build it when he saw some fountains that were built in Washington, D.C. Mayor J. Rolf Davis presented him this key to the city in October of 1956, and it's one of the oldest known dated keys in existence. And it was originally dubbed the Centennial Fountain, Originally cost $350,000, don't we? Wish we could have replaced it for that amount of money. And uh, the name was changed to the Linton E. Allen Fountain after the community leader's death in 1965. Um, Linton Allen helped build Sunbank, Orange County's most successful financial institution. He graduated from the University of Georgia and was also a World War I veteran. He lined up financing for Martin Marietta. He also played key roles in the siting of UCF, with the FTU, which is now UCF, and in helping Disney's lawyers secure property for the theme park. The plastic dome gave it a space-age quality befitting the growing aerospace and defense industry and a futuristic concept of what Orlando could be. This key will be displayed at Eola House, and I would like to thank our Casey Nelson, who found this on eBay um, and donated this back to the city. He actually paid $300 for it, but the guy that founded the estate sale only paid five, so he made a really good profit for it. But again, this is just an Orlando resident doing the right thing so we can actually secure a piece of our history. I'm delighted to do that. I know Mark did a nice article in the paper about it, but I'm just delighted to see that we have this piece of history back in the city of Orlando and also be able to really share 
what Linton A. Allen did for our city. I was unaware of his involvement with Martin Marietta and the fact that the fountain was linked to the aerospace industry I think is a really, really neat thing and I'm all the more glad that we saved that green plastic and didn't do anything different to it and made it and uh, really kept the original intent of it. And that's all I had, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll move to District 5. Commissioner Lynham. Um, Mayor, just a few announcements. I already had my major concern and discussed at the um, earlier agenda. But I do want to remind everyone today is the last day to register for the Affordable Care Act. And, uh, of course, remind our council and the mayor that I'm just very, very thankful for the work of Kathy Russell and Deborah Gerard that helped us kick it off a few months ago. And I invited Commissioner Eanes to help us to get that going in the city and now it's across the city. I think that's the right thing to do when I'm sick or something is wrong. I am very, very thankful to have a health care. And I believe no matter who you are, where you're from, you ought to have affordable health care. So um, thank you very much and, and you pay attention. Today at, I guess it's over now, until 11, we had navigators uh, on standby at Smith Center. There was a line up there uh, earlier. So we've just got to make sure people get their answers and get covered. That's urgent. That is about life and death. Thank you. I also want to announce that this past Friday, I had the great honor, uh, Mayor, of going to Atlanta, Georgia, with uh, Zeta Ross uh, from, what is it, Visitors, Orlando Visitors Bureau, whatever they're called out there. Visit the Orlando. convention, Visit Orlando people. <laughs> uh, the convention center, Commissioner uh, Russ, uh, uh, Russell, Moore, Moore Russell, joined us uh, later in the evening. And we presented to over 90 Deltas, Delta Sigma Theta sorority, asking them to come back to Orlando uh, for the 20, for our, since I'm a Delta, our 2017 convention. Um, with that meeting of those 90 people in leadership, uh, we gave a great presentation. But that's what it's like. You have to do everything in advance. Nothing happens at the spur of the moment. We gave a great presentation uh, with uh, um, uh, Zeta, with Rodney, with Colette, uh, and Commissioner uh, 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 Moore Russell and myself. We don't know what the answer would be, but since I've been sitting here, uh, we have entertained the Delters twice in the last two decades. That's 15,000 women who almost always bring their spouses, their children, their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren. So everybody benefits when Delta comes to town. So that's a, you're talking about economic, economic impact. That's money. That's money in the bank if we can get them here. Uh, we were competing against Detroit, Las Vegas, and Atlanta. So I uh, just wanted to let you guys know, and let's, if you know any Deltas in high places, like the president down in Tampa, call him, call him. Let him know to come back. And also, I want to um, express my deepest uh, 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 appreciation to Mayor Dye and I. I had a great day at DPAC. It was very emotional to me, anyway, to have, I, I know in the African American community, when you buy a house, I don't care what your background is. I don't care how many times you've done, been to jail or whatever else, but you have your house blessed. So we got together to have the DPAC blessed. It is a public facility. And because it is public, it, it, it involved so many of the interfaith community. And we basically went to the mayor's MLK interfaith group, pulled them out of there and got everybody going. Uh, Reverend Bracey and, uh, was one of our chairpersons and each one, um, uh, Rabbi Day and uh, 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 Iman, uh, uh, Muri um, uh, um, that Mark New James helped us get. It was a wonderful blessing and a great idea and I want to say thanks number one to Mayor uh, Dyer and all the interfaith community and Kathy uh, um, Ramsberger but especially LaVon Bracey who coordinated the entire event. It was something to behold to see over 60 ministers praying and supporting the prayer of different faith leaders. So to God be the glory on that. And uh, Oren, I just want to say thank you. I didn't see you back there earlier. But Mayor Dyer, for years and for city council, we've only had one African-American show, though, and that was Bishop Wiggins. 
and people will ask, well, why did we do so much with them? Because they were the only show though we had on that end. We've had Onyx, we had others, but my understanding, unless I'm wrong, Orin, the Word of God Church, a past a bishop, Newton, is now Shodo? Yes. Hello. Um, Mercy Drive, apartments, uh, Mike Rose, Mayor, all of you guys, these people have been out there. This is a great opportunity with uh, having Shodo status. They can't be the prime on anything because they don't have the capacity, but it's a great building block. It has taken us years of trying to get this Shodo done. Uh, to have it done. So I am just uh, excited uh, when he called me in uh, Atlanta to let me know. And of course, the other items on the agenda was just basically our soccer. Mayor went over that and I support it. Uh, our stride program that's attached to Blueprint. I'm just so happy about what Florida State University is doing. I got my master's in Florida State and uh, it's a wonderful school. We're working. Uh, together with the University of Central Florida, there is none of this you and this is me and what kind of thing. We are working with Jones High School to get those kids prepared through STEM and STREAM and all the other projects to prepare them for future workforce right here in Orlando. They don't have to go to New York. They don't have to go to California. We're going to train them right here to become the nurses, the doctors, the technicians, the nutritionists, or landscapers, or whatever they need to be. So um, that's a great program, and I'm so thankful to Janera. He was here. General, just as long as I ever seen you sit in council. So it must have been about strike. <laughs> must be the only reason. Uh, it's here. Janera is handling that. He and his staff, and they're doing a great job. And I joined Commissioner Sheehan. Um, we've done all of District 5, just if, except for a few on agenda item I2, to get all of our sidewalks done. And that's a great thing. It's about safety. It's about walkability for a city. It's about our children and our seniors. It's about handicapped people being able to have that mobility. So when you have sidewalks, you have mobility. And um, that is great. And you have connectivity. So uh, thanks for that. And I think that's about it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll move to District 6. Commissioner Rings. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, I'd like to say again thank you to Pastor Charles Williams for being here today, Zion Hill Missionary. Baptist Church is in the uh, District 6 in the city of Orlando, and I just happened to attend the service there on yesterday. He delivered a, a great message uh, and an uplifting and encouraging message entitled, It Is Well, and uh, I was there to present a proclamation to John Ellis, one of his members, who celebrated his 100th birthday, and uh, that was a grand time. Uh, that we had there at church. And also, Pastor Williams uh, went to DPAC as well to uh, pray with the pastors uh, at the DPAC. You didn't make it? Well, you said you were going to make it. <laughs> but anyway, okay. it was on his mind to be there. So we know you sent up a prayer anyway. And thank you so much for all that you do. Um, at last council meeting, um, the one thing I didn't talk about was the school resource officer positions. Um, specifically the agreement with the Orange County Public Schools. And of course, since 2006, Mayor, this is one thing that I've always talked about, and that is every elementary school having a police officer there to provide security for that school. So Chief Mina, if we could kind of talk with Orange County Public Schools and see what we can do to try to maybe work on that, because, you know, we remember the elementary school in Connecticut over a year ago and how tragic that situation was. And right now this contract calls for one officer to every four elementary schools and they can't do it. They really can't do it. So we need to do our very best to see what we can do to provide more security for our schools, our children, and also the parents and the teachers and administrators. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, also, during the NCAA tournament that was held here in Orlando, uh, Mayor and Commissioners, uh, as the Mayor talked about at Church Street Station and the Sun Trust Towers, I tell you, it was just really great seeing the lines of customers. They were literally outside the door, lined up. So the lines extended outside of the restaurants. They were lining up to get service uh, at our local restaurants in downtown Orlando. 
So that was a great thing uh, for us. And then on March the 19th, I attended the Orlando Police Department award ceremony with uh, Chief John Mina, and I think that was your first award ceremony. Um, it, it was a great thing because I had the opportunity to witness my uh, OPD liaison officer, Joseph Lundy. He was awarded the OPD uh, Distinguished Officer of the Year Award, and I just want to congratulate him from council for the great work that he has been doing for the city of Orlando and the police department. And then, of course, on Tuesday, uh, March the 25th, he was recognized by Nickelodeon and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, at a press conference with Chief Mina and the uh, Nickelodeon's Suite Resorts uh, Managing Director, Lewis Robbins, and all of the uh, Ninja Turtles, they were there on hand for a press conference, and they too recognized Officer Lundy for his uh, Distinguished Officer of the Year Award. On March the uh, 25th also, the Seniors First Community Champions Day, uh, Seniors First Office on L.B. McLeod Road in District 6, uh, I was there to present a proclamation from Mayor Dyer to them. Uh, it was very well received. And also to um, go and serve a couple of meals uh, as a volunteer. And that was a great event. This was their kickoff event for generating awareness to the senior uh, hunger issue and also the need for Meals on Wheels volunteers. They need some volunteers. Uh, the El Claudia Allen Center seniors were on hand. Uh, the UCF cheerleading squad was there, and uh, uh, I delivered two dinners. And then on, on Saturday, March the 29th, uh, myself and Commissioner Lynham, as well as Mr. Lynn Nicholson, community volunteer, and Bishop Kelvin Cabarrus, Impact Church, we were all recognized as um, honorees for their homecoming 2014 event at the Mount Sinai uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, they had a youth choir um, in celebration of their homecoming event, and this was a great event uh, with their pastor, uh, Pastor Herman Davis. And then on tonight is a town hall meeting uh, along with myself and the National Congress of Black Women, the Orlando chapter, and it's from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Dr. James R. Smith Center at 1723 Bruton Boulevard. And the main topic is the proposed changes to the Orange County Charter Amendment and how this would affect our county and our uh, constituents. Uh, drawing the Orange County Commission from six to eight seats, ending the election of the tax collector and more county term limits. Uh, all will be discussed there, so we're inviting everybody to come out for that. And as Commissioner Lynham has talked about the Affordable Care Act and this being the final day, the deadline to enroll is today. And at the Smith Center, uh, they started out at 8 a.m. today, and they will be ending about midnight tonight, uh, open for enrollment. So no one would be turned away. If you're in line right at midnight, uh, you still be served. And uh, this morning I went by in about uh, 930, and there were 25 to 30 people there already trying to get signed up. So we had a community room. We had two community rooms plus our little lobby area field. People were standing in line outside the door as well. Uh, the computer lab was filled to capacity with people trying to get signed up. So we're looking for uh, some great opportunities for people to get uh, affordable care. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner, and we'll move to District 1. Commissioner Bray. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I also would like to congratulate the folks from Lake Highland and Edgewater on their achievements, as well as Alan and his team. Um, there's a neat commercial running now on TV uh, through the NCAA tournament. Uh, I think it's Dick's Sporting Goods, and, and the tagline is sports matter, and they really do. We see that with character of kids and also from an economic development standpoint, so sports matter. 
And that kind of ties into the one comment I have about today's agenda, and that's item C10, which is our annexation of Story Park, formerly known as Weewahooty, correct, Alana? <laughs> Um, and, and look, um, I, I want to stress right away, I'm in favor of this. I am glad the owners uh, asked us to annex them to the city, and I support that. Um, and I also recognize a lot of these approvals um, were already kind of pre-negotiated with the city prior to them coming to us. But if you look at the numbers, folks, I mean, there's, out of 1,200 acres, they've dedicated 13.6 to city parks. Uh, that's 1.1 percent. And again, I recognize a lot of this was done, but if you put the two together, sports matter, we're growing rapidly. We have got to, and I challenge staff and I challenge my teammates up here, we've got to start thinking about resources to District 1 to do some parks and recreation because we've got tons of homes coming, and that's a good thing. And we got a lot of people playing out there, but we just got to provide some recreation. So, again, I support this, uh, but I ask staff to continue to challenge folks that come to the city for annexation and approvals. Let's continue to emphasize parks and recreation. And with that, Mayor, I would uh, make a motion to accept the uh, consent agenda. Motion, motion by Commissioner Gray, second by Commissioner Lynham. Just Commissioner Gray, I was looking at the permits being issued. What is the pig run of Lake Mona? I don't know, but I'm going to check on that. <laughs> <laughs> I could be the official starter. I don't know. <laughs> you don't ask. <laughs> All right. It could be like the running of the bulls. <laughs> could be. Yeah. Could be. Well, the small ones. Okay. All right. Uh, motion by Commissioner Gray, second by Commissioner Line. I'm all in favor of the motion. Indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. Let's, without objection, recess the city council meeting, convene the CRA meeting. The only item on there is the amended and restated limo operation agreement that we just voted on on the consent agenda as the city. So we right. need to vote on, on it as the CRA. Is there a motion Moved to approve? Second. second. Motion by Commissioner Lynham, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Discussion no. on favor of the motion indicates so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Let's um, adjourn the CRA meeting, convene the Neighborhood Improvement District Board of Directors meeting for the purpose of accepting meeting minutes and approving actions from the Downtown South Neighborhood Improvement District Advisory Council meeting of March the 19th, 2014. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second, second by Commissioner Stewart. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. We will adjourn the neighborhood improvement district meeting reconvene the city council meeting move to hearings ordinances on second read and let the city clerk read an extremely long title number one an ordinance of the city council of the city of orlando florida amending and restating the plan development zoning district regulations for the orlando health plan development on property generally located north of cayley street south of gore street east of atlanta avenue and west of orange avenue and comprised of 65 acres more or less rezoning certain land within the Orlando Health Development from PD slash T to O2 TSP in part and MU1 TSP in part and rezoning other certain land within the planning area from various straight zoning districts to PDT in part and PDAN in part providing for amendment of the city's official zoning map severability correction scrivener's errors and an effective date so moved second motion by Commissioner Sheehan second by Commissioner Stewart is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Ordinances first read, Madam Clerk, number one. An ordinance of the City of Orlando, Florida, amending the city's adopted growth management plan by amending the city's future land use map designation from residential medium intensity to office low intensity on certain real property generally located north of Vassar Street, south of Rugby Street, east of Holly Lane, and west of Edgewater Drive, comprised of 0.179 acres more or less. Amending the zoning classification from R3B TWSPAR to O1 TWSPAR for the same real property. Directing amendment of the city's official future land use and zoning maps, providing for severability, correction of scrivener's errors, and an effective date. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Stewart, second by Commissioner Ings. Is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners, hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. 
Number two, Madam Clerk. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, annexing to the corporate limits of the city certain land generally located at the northwest corner of the intersection of Narcusi Road and McCoy Road and comprised of 25.21 acres more or less, providing legislative findings and for the revision of the city's boundaries, providing for severability, correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. Move to approve. Second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Gray, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Is there anyone from the public <coughs> who would like to testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion <coughs> carries. And number three, Madam Clerk. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, designating certain land generally located north of the Osceola County boundary, south of Clap Sims Duda Road, east of Narcusi Road, and west of the Split Oak Forest Mitigation Park, and comprised of about 20, 211 acres as planned development PD district in part and planned development district with the aircraft noise overlay. PDAN district in part on the city's official zoning maps, providing special land development regulations of the plan development district, providing for severability, correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner Gray, second by Commissioner Stewart. Is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. That concludes the official business of the Orlando City Council for today, March 31st, Okay, we do have three appearance request cards, and you, if when you're called up, if you'd give your name and address, and you will have five minutes to address council. Emmett Odu. Good afternoon. My name is Emmett Odell. I live at 717 31st Street, Orlando 32805. I'm a 30-plus year resident of Metropolitan Orlando, and I'm not anti-development, but what I am is not for development without consideration to, of history. I came to the Historic Preservation Board several years ago about the Orlando Municipal Auditorium and Tinker Field and was told, don't worry, they will not be in harm's way. Every major metropolitan city in the world is interested in historic preservation. I've been to meetings of the City of Orlando Historic Preservation Board, and the discussions there really have nothing to do with preservation of history in Orlando. After the late January announcement of the destruction of Tinker Field, myself and others were at the Historic Preservation Board meeting on February 5th to speak, and they had no idea yet of the plans to destroy Tinker Field. If I'm not mistaken, the Historic Preservation Board is an extension of the City of Orlando Planning Department, and they were not aware of the destruction of the oldest and most historic Orlando venue. With all that said, the Citrus Bowl restoration could have included the preservation and restoration of Tinkerfield. The Dr. Phillips Art Center could have included the preservation, restoration, and repurposing of the Round Building, the American Federal Building, across the street from us this afternoon. It would have been a great addition to any art center. Then there's my passion, and that's all about saving the Orlando Municipal Auditorium. Bob Carr could be easily stripped back down to its original beauty and glory of the Orlando Municipal Auditorium and used for smaller events that are too small for DPAC. All of this brings me to the question, when will the city of Orlando ever start considering and incorporating the history of Orlando and Orange County in their plans for the future? Thank you. Thank you. Jerry Pitts. Thank you, Mayor Dyer, commissioners. I appreciate the opportunity to address you. I moved to Orlando in 1983, uh, raised my family here, had some great times at Tinkerfield. 
we've enjoyed baseball games there, spring training games. I've also had some great experiences at the ten, uh, excuse me, at the Citrus Bowl, uh, concerts, college football games, bowl games. I'm absolutely in favor of whatever needs to be done to update and modernize the Citrus Bowl. I just, I really hate to see it done at the expense of another historic venue in Tinkerfield. Thank you. Thank you, and Joshua Palladino. Good afternoon, everybody. Joshua Palladino, 1415 West Robinson Street. I'm here today on behalf of the Orange County Green Party as well as the residents of Southern Rock Lake and the Citrus Bowl community who were not involved in the decision-making process that originally decided to uh, remove Tinkerfield or, in thought, remove Tinkerfield. Downstairs in one of the glass cases, there's a the, the Twins hat from the time when they played here at Tinkerfield. And with Commissioner Sheehan buying or getting a key, that history is worth preserving. And here we have one of the largest pieces of Orlando history on the chopping block. Martin Luther King gave a speech and just the ability to continue to further utilize that property is essential in our community. Um, when I was looking at some of the numbers, one of the things that I came across is that it's 250000 plus to keep Tinker Field open per year, but the money that comes back from the concerts, just the Electric Daisy Carnival itself, is enough to cover those expenses. The money that came into the local African-American communities in District 6 and District 5 for the Electric, electric Daisy Carnival alone and the monster truck rallies that are in that area are worth preserving. So um, I'm just here today to say think about it, preserve it, and I hope that you stand with the Historic Preservation Board to keep Tinker Field open. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to testify at general appearance? Then we are adjourned.